From three-wheeled microcars to a six-wheeled behemoth with a TV, we're sure there's something on this list you'll want to drive. This is Reacher with Mind's Eye Design, and here are 15 crazy cars you won't believe exist. Number 15. It goes without saying that the idea for this one was inspired by the James Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me. This zero-emission all-electric vehicle is the first car that can be driven on land and underwater. It runs on three motors. One is used on land, which can provide a top speed of 75 miles per hour. The other two power twin propellers, which allow it to run on the water or glide under the surface like a submarine to a maximum depth of 33 feet. There's room for two passengers with breathing equipment integrated into the open cockpit design. Even though a production date hasn't been set, the manufacturer expects it to cost less than a Rolls Royce. Number 14. This first entry was created over a 10 year span by a gentleman named Walter C. Jerome. Although the unorthodox design is lacking in visual appeal, it more than makes up for it with safety features that were only mere afterthoughts of the car manufacturers of that time. The insect-like body of the car is composed of two parts. The rear is a passenger compartment protected by a safety cage. Unlike standard vehicles, it has an elevated centrally located driver's seat. A glass dome on top allows maximum visibility while helping isolate the driver from other passengers to reduce distractions. The engine is housed in the front, which is made to pivot during a crash, diverting energy away from the passenger cabin. Other safety features include an oversized headlight, doors that open parallel so they don't fly open in a collision, and an air-filled rubber bumper that surrounds the entire car. Unfortunately, the approximate $10,000 price tag was a turnoff to most consumers since a Cadillac could be purchased for half the price. Number 13. This one-off was created as an experimental vehicle for the 1957 Daytona Speed Trials. The designer started by removing the original interior and windshield, replacing it with a single driver's side cockpit and smaller windshield. To make it as aerodynamic as possible, the rest was enclosed, with only a giant tail fin just behind the driver. The engine was bored out to 387 cubic inches, which produced upwards of 400 horsepower with a reported speed of 180 miles per hour. After this, the car did some time on promotional tours, but was eventually dismantled for parts. Like other cars of its kind, it's been recreated by enthusiasts and can be seen at modern day car shows from time to time. Number 12. This lone vehicle from the short-lived Aurora Motor Company was created by a Catholic priest with a love of automotive design and a desire to make the vehicles of the current era safer. The 18-foot-long car has a fiberglass body with a domed roof made from tinted plastic. Safety features that weren't standard at the time were added such as a roll cage with side impact bars, a padded instrument panel, a collapsible steering column, seat belts, and the ability to swivel the seats to face the rear in case of an imminent collision from the front. The prototype cost approximately $30,000 to build, but a cost of $12,000 was anticipated had the car reached the production stages. Number 11. You'd probably mistake this one for the average race car at first glance. It's actually a solar-powered car that was brought to life by a group of students from the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. It was designed and constructed in under 18 months for an approximate cost of $500,000. The sleek two-seater has a carbon fiber body that's covered with 43 square feet of monocrystalline solar panels. These provide energy to a 16 kilowatt hour battery array which powers twin motors capable of producing a top speed of 82 miles per hour. A single charge provides up to 310 miles which can be increased to over 500 miles using the solar power. The designers have said that they'd like to have a lower priced street legal version available at some point. Before you get caught up in designing your own concept car, don't forget to subscribe for more amazing content and ring that bell to become part of our awesome notification team. Number 10. This three-wheeled microcar looks like a Volkswagen Beetle that came out of the womb way too early. It was manufactured in Germany from 1955 to 1964 to offset the lack of aircraft produced by Messerschmitt at the time. It has a length of just over seven and a half feet with a width of four feet. Tandem seating allows for two passengers in the narrow body with a canopy bubble providing protection from the elements while in use. The 191cc two-stroke engine produces almost 10 horsepower for a top speed of 65 miles per hour. 
The four-speed transmission employs the same gear ratio whether the car is traveling in forward or reverse. Restored models can be found for upwards of $40,000. Number 9. This Italian design bubble car was built in a number of countries by multiple companies. BMW mass-produced their version over a seven-year period from 1955 to 1962. The 298cc single-cylinder four-stroke engine was capable of a top speed of 53 miles per hour with a fuel consumption of 78 miles per gallon. Access was through the front of the car, which also served as the only door. The dashboard was attached to the inside of the door along with the steering column. Later models were enlarged to add a rear bench seat and extra doors along with a more conventional wheelbase. The engine size was also increased to 582 cc's, increasing the top speed to 64 miles per hour. Original pricing on these ran around $1,000. Number 8. Although it's currently associated with the line of Buicks that sported the title from 1959 to 2005, the original LeSabre name was first used for this 1951 concept. The design drew its inspiration from the look of a modern jet fighter, elements of which symbolize the latest in engineering concepts. The body was composed of fiberglass, aluminum, and magnesium. Along with the imitation air intake and exhaust port, the wraparound windshield and tail fins accentuated the sleekness of the vehicle. Extra features included heated seats, headlights housed in the front intake, and a sensor to activate the convertible top in case of rain. The car currently resides in a museum with the occasional appearance on the auto show circuit. Number 7. This equally small brother of the PLP 50 was manufactured from 1965 to 1966. It measures just a bit over 6 feet long and 3 feet wide with a weight of 330 pounds. The three-wheel design has a fiberglass body with a clear bubble top. The upper portion can be raised to allow access to the interior which has seating for two people. It uses the same powertrain as the P50, which is a 49cc engine that generates 4.2 horsepower. This, along with the three-speed manual transmission, allowed for a top speed of 28 miles per hour. The company claimed that this made driving the car almost cheaper than walking. Number 6. This car made its first appearance at the 1956 General Motors Motorama Auto Show, intending to be a preview of the Buicks of the near future. A glass canopy covers the fully red interior, which can seat up to four people. The sweeping design of the fiberglass body has a front end that slopes downward to integrate with the bumper, while the deep-set grille and headlights add to the aggressive look of the car. Subtle tail fins at the rear curve down to a single Dagmar that houses the brake and backup lights. Right above this is an integrated backup camera intended to eliminate the need for a rearview mirror. Like the earlier entry from GM, this one was also a concept before lending its name to a full-fledged production line of cars. Number 5. The model number of this amphibious vehicle comes from the supposed speed of the vehicle being 7 knots on the water and 70 miles per hour on land. It has an overall length of just over 14 feet and a width of 5 feet with a dry weight of 2300 pounds. The design has a front undersurface that is slightly pointed to mimic the V-shaped hull of a boat. The shape of the body looks like the stereotypical sedan of the times, albeit in a smaller size. The 1147cc four-cylinder rear-mounted engine has an output of 43 horsepower to the four-speed transmission. Steering is done with the front wheels while a second gear lever engages the drive for forward or reverse. The original cost on these was anywhere from $2,800 to $3,300. Number 4. The designer of this one claimed that giving the car six wheels was done as a way to offset the car from its competition as well as being an added safety feature when driving on wet roads. It has two pair of front wheels which are both steerable and one pair of rear wheels. The two-door convertible is powered by a 500 cubic inch twin turbocharged V8 said to be capable of producing a top speed of over 200 miles per hour. The car weighs just under 2,900 pounds with a length of 16 feet and a width of just over 6.5 feet. Features include an automatic fire extinguisher, electronic instruments, a detachable hardtop, a telephone in the door, and a TV set. Only two of these were ever made, one black and one white, with a rumored selling price of $75,000. Number 3. This concept was a good example of the optimistic view Toyota had of the future when it premiered at the 1970 Tokyo Motor Show. Although it was fourth in their line of experimental concepts, it was numbered as seven due to the car it was based on. 
The two-seater had a similar body to other high-end sports cars of that time. But unlike other vehicles with gull-wing doors, these have the hinge at the rear of the roof section, which lifts the door and the corresponding section of the roof towards the rear when opened. The inner armrest on both seats is extended forward to create a split center console which contains all the normal controls you'd see in a car. The 5 liter V8 engine had to be tuned down for use on public roads so the turbochargers were removed, leaving an output of around 450 horsepower. I'm pretty sure nobody complained since this thing was still capable of speeds around 175 miles per hour. Number 2 it's no surprise that this one showed up at the 1980 Paris Motor Show in a time when space age technology was a major influence in design. The truncated pyramid shape of the car's exterior incorporates glass panels that culminate in a roof that is roughly 12 inches by 16 and a half inches. Two gullwing doors allow access to an interior which sports a three seat layout. The tube shaped steering column sits in front of the centrally located driver's seat. Controls for the car were on the steering wheel and steering column, as well as the door panels, which feature built-in monitors. Time and again, we see where the impractical design of such vehicles inspired creators to move ahead of traditional ways of thinking, allowing the cars we see today to become a reality. Hey everyone, be sure and let us know in the comments what you think of our picks and which one is your favorite. Number 1. This was the second of four Firebird concepts by GM. The goal was to build a car that was ready for the highways of the future, yet still practical enough for the modern family. The lightweight titanium body measures a whopping 19 and a half feet in length. The low and wide aerodynamic design features two large air intakes at the front with three tail fins and dual tanks on the rear. The interior is covered by a glass bubble top that opens in a gull wing style above conventional doors. Inside are four adjustable lounge-style seats with snack trays for use during autonomous driving mode. Innovative features include a regenerative gas turbine, independent suspension with load leveling, a magnetic ignition key, and a sophisticated guidance system intended as a self-driving feature. Although this car was ahead of its time, it would seem commonplace on today's roads were it not for the Space Age design. Hey guys, this is Cassie. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell us in the comments below what you found to be the most interesting and why. Also, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.